Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live on TV3 with me, Martin Nasir Dudate. Coming up within the next one hour. Government announces cancellation of a PDS deal as Ghana forfeits $190 million Millennium Challenge Compact. Forty-six communities advised to stay safe as controlled spillage of the buoy dam commences today. And on the international front, UK Prime Minister to push for election if the EU agrees three months delay. We have details of all these stories and more, including business, sports, entertainment, all coming up within the next one hour. This bulletin is live uh, from our studio here at Adesawa in Accra. Let's settle down for details now, starting from uh, government, because uh, it has terminated the power distribution services uh, concession agreement with the electricity company of Ghana uh, with immediate effect. And that's according to Information Minister Kujo Pongkroma, who announced that a while ago. The minister, who was addressing the media in Accra, revealed that government commenced the necessary process to terminate the agreement at exactly 9.30 today. The government of Ghana in 2014, during the Mahama administration, signed up to the compact agreement and opted for private sector participation in the ECG turnaround. The Akufuado administration lifted Ghanaian participation from 20% to 51% to ensure that while Ghana benefits from both the technical and financial muscle of the leads, Ghanaians have the opportunity to participate more significantly in the non-technical parts of the concession. The government believes that any transaction of this nature must be structured to give Ghana and Ghanaians a significant play. Additionally, the government ensures or ensured that no jobs were lost in the transfer process and no jobs will be lost even in this termination process as well. The decision that the government has had to take, as difficult as it is, despite the significant international pressure, is necessary in our view to protect and preserve the assets of ECG and Ghanaians. President Akufuado took a solemn oath before God and the Ghanaian people that he will be faithful and true to the Republic of Ghana, that he will dedicate himself to the service and well-being of the people of the Republic of Ghana, and he has done exactly that despite the pressure. The 308 million US dollars already secured will be utilized to improve the parts of the program, such as the primary substations, etc. Measures have been put in place to ensure a smooth transition fully to ECG, the government has been committed to ensuring and will continue to ensure that even in this period, or the period of this suspension, electricity supply has been and will continue to be stable. Dumso is a thing of the past. We also do not expect interruptions in power supply as a result of this decision. During the intervening period, government also noticed several actors, political and civil society, who weighed in on the matter with some views. And we note sections of the Ghanaian community that have preferred well-meant suggestions. Our view is that when your nation is at the crossroads, you back it, you wish it well, and you support it. We also note in particular the opposition NDC that has only sought to make political capital out of this with the hopes that it will inure to their parochial benefit. They have consistently made efforts to pitch Ghana against foreign investors. And this is not the first time. In the FT transaction, they sought to report the sovereign state to the U.S. government with hopes that the U.S. government will investigate and maybe sanction the Ghanaian authorities. They failed. In the sino hydro transaction, they sought to get the IMF to scuttle the transaction. They failed. In this particular transaction, you'll recall that they were quick to seek to get the U.S. government to take over the inquiry and literally push Ghana on where to go. Initially, they claimed that this was because conditions precedent had been changed to conditions subsequent. And that is why due diligence wasn't properly done. This has been proven over time to be mere propaganda and a palpable untruth, and it will not wash. The NDC distortions that the Akufuado government conspired to bend the rules for PDS have also clearly been exposed by the record of events. 
For the avoidance of doubt, government reiterates that neither the government nor the president has had any interest in PDS. PDS is a consortium that was created by the company known as Miralco, which was the successful bidder in the selection process. Government or its assigns did not form PDS. Miralco was selected through an international competitive process supervised by agencies including the MCC, which process was initiated in 2016. And we have the view that this attempt to distort facts will not wash. While the NDC seeks to always tag this transaction as corrupt, they have never been able to adduce one piece of cogent evidence to back this claim. The evidence rather is that the Akufuado administration is the one which through due diligence discovered the suspected breach and has proceeded to act to preserve national assets. And again, any propaganda to the contrary will not wash. That's Kojo Paul Nkrumah, who is the information minister. He has also denied claims that government decided to terminate the, uh, the uh, power distribution service concession agreement after some elements of fraud were identified. The minister says material and fundamental breaches identified uh, after due diligence was conducted informed government decision to terminate. The evidence rather is that the Akufuado administration is the one which through due diligence discovered the suspected breach and has proceeded to act to preserve national assets. And again, any propaganda to the contrary will not wash. The decision that the government has had to take, as difficult as it is, despite the significant international pressure, is necessary in our view to protect and preserve the assets of ECG and Ghanaians. All right, so before that uh, press uh, statement uh, that, that made the press was uh, uh, held, the government of the United States of America uh, had also released a statement, and they said that Ghana's decision to terminate the concession agreement between ECG uh, and the power distribution services, PDS, was wrong. It said that its independent investigations of the agreement proved that it was valid and described the cancellation of the deal as unwarranted. These were contained in a statement issued by the U.S. Embassy on Tuesday, October 22 in Accra. The statement said, as a result of the decision, Ghana will no longer qualify for the $190 million dedicated to the Millennium Challenge Corporation um, for the 20-year deal. Nonetheless, $308 million will still be available for further efforts to improve power supply in the country. In a related development, however, the electricity company of Ghana, ECG, has terminated the private sector participation transaction agreement with Power Distribution Services Ghana Limited, that's PDS. In a statement, ECG uh, says that it has assumed full operational and financial control of the electricity distribution business in the southern zone of Ghana with immediate effect. Consequently, all activities which were hitherto undertaken by PDS have uh, reverted to ECG. The electricity company urged all stakeholders and customers to engage ECG in their normal business activities, which include, but are not limited to the following, metering, billing, um, distribution of bills, bill reconciliation, revenue collection, new service connections, disconnections, amongst others. The statement further said all checks issued in respect of power purchases and other related activities should be in the sole name of the Electricity Company of Ghana Limited. All assets currently in the name of PDS would be reverted to uh, the ECG with immediate effect and will be rebranded in accordance with the decision over the next few weeks. So joining us in studio is uh, Kojo Poku, who is an energy um, analyst, and I would want to pick his thoughts on this development. Clearly, there seemed to be um, a, a call they were making seemed to have been heeded by government 
What next for Ghana, the government, ECG going forward? Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you, Martin. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yes. And, and so that, that then becomes the question that many will be ask, asking. So yes, we've terminated the contract. You were part of a group that were asking government to do that and be bold to take this decision. That decision has been taken. What is the advisable next step for government? Okay, there's something that I think we should put out there for Ghanaians to know. The government have made this decision to terminate two, three months ago. Look, after the government investigation a month into when this story broke, that mm -hmm. there was a clear breach there, uh, guarantee, the supply guarantee and the guarantees that PDS put in place was not valid. The government decided that as pursuant to the clauses of the agreement, it was going to terminate this agreement. What delayed the announcement is the Americans, as we've clearly come to know, okay. that the government had a position, the Americans didn't agree with the government's position, and they would not otherwise agree to the way forward. Because the government wanted to put this thing behind us within one month, terminate it, conduct a new um, processes to put somebody else in place. But the Americans were insistent over the last two, three months with various conversations between the U.S. and the um, uh, Ghana government mm -hmm. that, look, this is how our position, and the position seemed to be entrenched. Until Friday, it came head on that, look, do this or I'll do this. And yeah. government was like, look, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Let me go. And let me answer your question going forward. For us, what is important is that now we no longer have the pressure of a timeline. Right. So we no longer have to now stipulate to by end of this year or the next six months. They've so already no restrictive, no restrictive in terms of the timeline. Okay. We are still committed as a nation, committed to the compact signed between Ghana and the U.S. So it means that Ghana government is going to still do the PSP. Mm -hmm. We're still going to put a concessionaire in charge of ECG. But now the good news is that we can take our time and do the process according to our own dictate. Mm. As the Minister of Information said, the Finance Minister will come in and I'm sure in consultation with his colleague, the Energy Minister, they will put forward a proper plan of action who will now get to run ECG going forward. But the most important thing is that going forward, we are going to do the PSP, but without the timetable of the American dictate of do it at this time or you lose the money. Right, and talking about taking our time to be able to now look for uh, the new replacements for PDA, is that not going to affect the first reason why, or the reason why we first of all needed the concessionaire? I don't understand. In terms of, so we needed someone to come and help revamp ECG. Right. And there have been issues. Mm -hmm. So if we are not going to take time to look for a replacement, is that not going to further worry why we needed ease? No, needed when, we say we're gonna take, when I say the government is going to take its time, I honestly don't think the government is going to take a year. But it could take a year. No, it, it wouldn't take a year. I, we, some of us you are hope, confident. I, I, I'm hoping it doesn't take a ah, year. Sorry, okay. I'm hoping it doesn't take a year. Look, there is a commitment on the part of government that the PSP brings some benefits. And with that benefits, we all will enjoy a much better service. We okay. saw clearly the management of PDS when they now came under the private umbrella, the work they put in place. So we are 100% confident that if a PSP is put in place, people keep saying that, then why not give it back to ECG and let them run? The most important part is who brings in the money? There is a minimum investment of $500 million to be invested. Minimum, not okay. maximum. Minimum of $500 million. Government does not have that money. Mm -hmm. So we need a private investor who will bring that money. Now, there are a lot of various reasons where you need a PSP. But which structure? Okay. Do we still do the concessionaire? Do we do a listing? Probably. Do we do... Okay. Every option is now on the table because the Americans have already punished us mm. for not doing what they want. So now we can do what we want okay. as long as we deliver a PSP. But I think the concessionaire model we've all agreed is the best we are going to commit and hope the government engage us mm. to put that in place. But it's important that it's done immediately, immediately. but without pressure. Okay. Remember, most of the times when these things have come up, when the agreement went to parliament, we suggested a few things. Mm. Government didn't do it because there was pressure from America to meet a deadline. To this thing come up, you want to correct it. Pressure from America to meet a deadline. Now, that's why they even said there was going to be con uh, restrictive tender. Thank uh, you. The restrictive tender yeah. thing came about because there was pressure, pressure to meet certain deadline. Now, we don't have no that pressure. pressure. Okay. And finally, to ECG says they've taken over 
the full operations, um, what PDS was doing. What should the expectations be? Should Ghanaians also say that, well, now that you are back to quote unquote square one, we should give them time to operate fully? Well, look, the workers, the management, no new person was brought on board. Okay. So what there was the staff of ECG that was transferred to the new company, which was called PDS. PDS. I think the only new person that was brought in is the MD of PDS, which was Reverend Hatton, that was brought in to head it. I don't know what happens to him in the transition. But this message goes out to the ECG staff. Like, the, uh, for me, it's a bit psychological and moral. Mm. We've, been, we've moved to a new company. Mm. We're expecting some benefits. We're expecting some good things. Now we are going back to ECG. Is it the ECG of old or ECG of new? That, that's so, a concern. Uh, 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 I mean, there's a concern for staff. Okay. And I think government should assure them that the morale should be high. They should feel that the right thing is being done. For me, I'm suggesting government, should, the minister or the deputy minister should meet the senior okay. staff and the union of ECG so that they feel that government is concerned about their plight. Mm. Because bear in mind, the transformers and the cars that was moved, they don't have voice and they don't have feelings. But the humans who are the part of the assets now need to be consolidated, be to be assured that they are not in any way going to lose their job one way or the other. Okay. Uh, certainly, uh, the talking points would uh, be coming in after this decision. We'll see. Uh, the uh, information minister says that um, the finance minister in the next few days will be telling the country what the next line of action would be. Uh, we we'll certainly would also keep you posted when that next line of action is announced. But thank you very much. I uh, think it was most likely going to be next week because the president and a lot of the ministers are, are, in, Sochi, in, town. are in Sochi for the African-Russian conference. The minister will come back, but I think the good deadline will be, deadline will be to look forward to this next week. Month. Next month. Sorry, next, next week. week. Next week. Next week. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Kojo Poku is uh, an energy analyst and helping us at least put into perspective this whole brouhaha and uh, confusion and clarity that has been brought to bear by government and other uh, key voices on this ECG PDS saga. In a related development, the Criminal Investigations Department, CID, of the Ghana Police Service uh, uncovered PDA said that they uncovered PDS and said that it may have used payments from customers to fund parts of its premium payments. Bene Jekumbuatin for yes. Media General. Um, we understand certain aspect of this deal has been referred to the CID. What exactly is the CID supposed to investigate? Okay, the CID, yes, you are correct, has been involved in this inquiry ab initio. It is as part of their work in tracing flows and in examining documents that this uh, discovery that um, parts of the premium paid may have been funded from account receivables have been uncovered, which part of the inquiry I have mentioned um, now that we are done with this first question to establish whether or not there are valid um, guarantees, um, I think have an opportunity to move uh, further from there. Let's shift our attention from power issues and that of the PDS. The Bui Power Authority has started spilling excess water from the dam. The exercise started at uh, 9 this morning. The authority says 46 communities downstream have been advised to stay safe. Let's go to the phone lines now and speak to the Corporate Affairs Manager, Sheree Lawson, on um, what... The, their expectations are regarding the spillage and whether or not people have heeded to their advice to move away from downstream or at least stay safe. And what does stay safe mean? Madam, good afternoon. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good afternoon. Is this the first time that uh, Bui Power Authority is spilling uh, water from its dam? Yes, this is the first time we are actually spilling excess water from the dam. The very first time we spilled water was when we were doing the two-way test after the construction of the dam. Mm. And you have advised um, communities uh, living downstream to stay safe. What, what, do you care to clarify what stay safe means? Yes, we have sensitized the communities downstream to be cautious during the time we are spilling. So, and our men are on the ground, and the Navy is on the river, just to make sure everything is all right. We started spilling around 9 a.m., and so far, so good. Everything is going on well. The water is going 
flowing through its normal river course. Okay. Uh, did you anticipate that uh, it might overflow its banks, the river I mean? No, we do not anticipate the water overflowing the river bank. Because, mind you, we are doing a control spilling, right. and so we are being very cautious. Right. Um, the, the other concern that uh, some have raised uh, would be how long is this going to take? Is it a, a one-day event, two days maybe a week? As you may know, in our first press release, we indicated that between one to ten days. It may take two days, it may take three days, but we are monitoring the inflows from upstream to be sure what is going into the reservoir. That will determine when we stop the spilling. Okay, and um, the, the water levels have risen in the dam leading to this spillage. The source of what is making it, is it rains or it's another river that is feeding into the dam, for which reason you have need, there's a need to spill? You, 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 you know that this year we've had abundant rain and the inflows as a result of the abundant rain into the reservoir is what is causing this. The dam is designed to hold water up to the uh, uh, elevation 183 meters, meters above sea level. And the water has risen almost up to 183 above sea level. So that is what is causing a spill. Which means that if there are more rains expected, there is a possibility the spillage might extend even beyond the 10 day anticipated. anticipated. Yes, yes, depending on the inflows. Okay, we will just uh, keep our fingers crossed. There was a story, however, that you had already started the spillage even before announcing to the communities downstream. Um, no, that is not very that true. Is that is not true. We started announcing this to the communities along the downstream long ago. We've been talking to them. We were on the river. We've been sensitizing them. And we've announced it on all the FM stations in the Bahafo and the Savannah region where our communities are. So it is not true. So there is assurance that the, 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 those living downstream, the communities, 46 communities, they are going to be okay? Yes, they are going to. We cannot start spilling without informing the community. Okay. So that is not true. Thank you uh, for making time to speak with us. We'll certainly keep an eye on this development within the buoy catchment area. But thank you, uh, Cherie Lawson, thank Corporate you. Affairs Manager of Buoy Power Authority. If you are in and around that area, you can send us a message and let us know how the process is going. We'll be happy to get to know about that. This is still Midday Live on TV3. Stay with us. There's a need to dig deeper. Sexual harassment in workplaces, including universities, goes back to Ada. It is now that everybody is waking up to it. We will continue working with determination to deliver justice for victims and ultimately to achieve our shared goal of eliminating sexual exploitation. Welcome back. Former president of the Ghana Baptist Convention and convener of the Forum for Chris, um, Christians Against Corruption, Reverend Dr. Kojo Uusu Osewusu, has urged churches not to shield members who perpetrate crime. He says such criminals must be handed over to the law, uh, to the law enforcement agencies for appropriate sanctions. Sharing his view on sexual exploitation within the corridors of power, Dr. Osewusu suggested a national discourse on criminalizing sex for favors. He spoke to our Ashanti regional correspondent, William Evans Inkum. It was one of our ladies, uh, young ladies, who preached that day. It was their day. And she gave a testimony that he at KN University, when she finished school and they, were, they had to fill some forms so that they could be given some jobs on campus, the man who was supervising the thing told her in black and white, told her, if you, you know, you go out, you go and come and apply. But now you have the opportunity for you to be taken right away if you only allow me to sleep with you. Uh, let me use your church as an example. Yeah. If a member or a congregant finds himself in this kind of 
situation and a situation he being the perpetrator what is done to such a person you can commit uh, immoral sexual immorality either by committing fornication or adultery and for that the church has laws you will immediately be suspended and cancelled you may be suspended for a number of months or year and be cancelled it's not something that is criminalized so we cannot take you to court yes if, if there's an aspect of the law that um, traps this particular perpetrator to the extent that he's culpable of facing charges would a church be ready to um, hand that person over to the laws for the law to take its course why not uh, I can say for fact that in the Baptist Church we don't cover our people you understand once you go against something that is criminal you cannot have support from the church you have to face the law. All right, so do speak out. That's the hashtag, do speak out. Meanwhile, tenants of the Accra Mall will temporarily close their shops on Thursday, the 24th of October, to bring to the fore what they say are the difficult conditions under which they operate at the mall. In a press statement from the Accra Mall Tenants Association, the tenants say the decision by managers of the mall to erect scaffolding in the walkways of the mall in order to fix the ceiling is warding off customers. Uh, the tenants also proposed that the scaffolds be erected at the sections where work was being done and then moved to other sections of the ceiling rather than erecting the scaffolds all over the walkway of the mall. Now, Ghana is to uh, join four other African countries to study asthma in kids using modern diagnostics me methods. The study seeks to efficiently identify young adolescents with asthma rather, uh, and, and gather information on symptom burden and also management uh, strategies. Here's a report by Beatrice Spiogabra. Asthma is a common chronic and recurrent respiratory disorder affecting many children and adults worldwide. Affected persons have episodes of breathing difficulties which limit their quality of life and may occasionally lead to death. In Ghana, approximately 1 in 10 children in urban areas may have the condition. However, many of the affected persons are uncertain about diagnosis and effective ways of management. The multi-country study dubbed Acacia study involves Ghana, Nigeria, Malawi, Zimbabwe, South Africa and Uganda. It is a collaboration with the Queen Mary University of London. It is expected to use modern diagnostic tools to gather information on about 4,000 school children between the ages of 12 and 16 years. Move on with those with asthma to see how do they treat it, what drugs do they use, what are their problems, what are their coping strategies, and if uh, there is anything we can do, we use that to build strategies for managing asthma, especially in schools and at homes and the general community. Pediatric pulmonologist at the Comfanochi Teaching Hospital, Dr. Sandra Kwateng, was worried drugs for childhood asthma is not listed on the NHIS, although adult asthma drugs are listed. It's expensive to buy asthma medications, and if parents have to every month pay about 100 Ghana cities to 120 Ghana cities to buy medicines for children, for some families, that's a major thing. So we want to appeal to the authorities that if we could put asthma medicines for children on NHIS, because asthma medicines for adults are listed. Deputy Ashanti Regional Director of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Yebo Ewuji, the service has started screening entrance to schools to detect those who have asthma and other ailments. 
Let's come to the Greater Accra region now. And Pens Plus Bytes, in partnership with Media General, is to mark the Global Media Information Literacy Week to promote media information literacy. The event is to equip the citizens to know about the information age. The Global Media Information Literacy Week calls for local events around uh, the world to promote media information literacy connections across disciplines and professions. And uh, clearly on your screens are some of the um, sessions that uh, have been organized by Pens Plus Bytes who have helped quite a number of media houses, journalists and other institutions to understand the information age and how they can better position themselves um, going forward. We've been joined in studio uh, by the executive director of Pens Plus Bytes, Juliet Amwa, to give us some more insight into this event. Uh, thank you very much, Juliet. And, um, Information is everything, they say, right? Uh, there is the information we're coming up. Can you, first of all, tell us the essence of that, uh, what we are going to be celebrating next? I think that a few years ago, UNESCO and a few of their partners realized that it's important that we begin to frame the environment in which especially citizens are beginning to interact with media, both print, you know, uh, mm online and, and uh, digital media. Yes, media. And so that's where the conversation started. Obviously, two, three years down the line, it's a much bigger conversation. Mm. It's about ethics. It's about legal issues. How are ordinary citizens who now have different tools that are producing uh, their own media, how are they framing it? How are they interacting? How are they analyzing that media? And what can we as journalists or media persons or governments help them to navigate that space mm. responsibly? Mm. And that's where it's... And started. that's the catch word, responsibly, because I think there's been a big concern about fake news taking over the, the you know, conventional media. But let's, you said about two to three years ago. Can you tell us about the progress we've made since then? Uh, are we winning you know, in getting more people informed to, to be responsible? I think that that's why the Global Media uh, and Information Literacy Week is so crucial. It's an emerging area, uh, specifically in Ghana. We haven't yet caught on to it as other people have. Mm. Uh, but yes, we are making some progress. Pen Plus Bytes and DW Academy have now uh, stepped up the efforts that some of the other people have been doing. Uh, the University of Ghana, for example, has its media and information uh, uh, unit okay. uh, department, and they've been teaching that for many, many years. Mm. So we're just here to make that conversation stronger. Uh, we're working in partnership with uh, GIJ and some of the other um, institutions, key institutions. key institutions who train journalists and young people, and we're looking to make... Okay, so it is next week. It is tomorrow, actually. It's actually tomorrow. It's starting tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're, we're starting with a launch tomorrow okay. of the week um, at Pen Plus Bites in Osu, Osu Aqua J. Yes. Um, and the week begins tomorrow and ends on the 31st of uh, October. October. It's, so it's a seven day event. We will have different activities at different venues mm. GIJ, the physician and surgeons, um, where we will have an award ceremony. Uh, mm. because we have had young people put out m their uh, media messages. Okay. And so we will be seeing all of that. And it's open to the public, I It's suppose. open to the public. We'd like to see everyone there. Okay. So you heard, right, uh, do make a date with Pens Plus Bytes and uh, all the key partners in making all of us responsible citizens when it comes to information. Thank you very much, uh, Julia Tamwa, Executive Director of Pens Plus Bites. This is still Midday Live on TV3. Let's uh, move on to some other stories. So on MTN Video Report today, uh, Clarence Ejiri reports on an abandoned classroom block at Suame Dadiasu in the Western North region. Oh, that is a senior high school. We have the seven unit classroom block which started under the ex Muhammad's administration. Unfortunately, after the elections, this building has been abandoned. In fact, this building was needed urgently to support the inadequate classroom space. It was almost 70 to 80 percent complete. We have the roofing almost completed. However, when the elections were over and the NDC lost, 
This is the fit of the building. The most painful part is beneath the roof. You can see cement. These are cements that are needed to complement and to support the work and finish it. Is that how we intend to spend our taxpayers' money? Is that how our leaders will use our taxpayers' money? This is the Senior High School. Clarence Sajiri reporting from Swaman Dadiaso. You can also send us your video on 055-143304. Uh, 055-143304. This is Midday Live. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Time for business now. Some spare part dealers at Swami Magazine bearing uh, the brunt of the Nigerian Benin border closure have started complaining. They lament the spare parts they imported from Nigeria are locked up at the border. Ashanti Regional Correspondent Beatrice Piogabra visited the Swami Enclave and spoke to some, um, uh, some interest groups on the impact of the border closure on their businesses. Nigeria na emrese na aka boda ho enti me bai me fra brick robes crotch repair kits brick part and a timing belt and am deba e bo so me na otwe me ensani eh ama ye nyuma nyina asa nyuma ye move wan ka ye ton anya ye so nya bi de hwe mas school ye de bi tu school fi ne books e be to ton nyina ye se ni nyina aka ho ti e ba ja be tana tana se ya ne ye ko ya hwa wo fre bi ya mo se e tana e be bie se ya na e ko a e ma hmm Onyama aka border ho no obetimi diska botnia to say by capital say the be fans say be 60000 dey be do uh -huh. na enu so ni skati true am dey adwuma this abri aka won dey music am dey adwuma nyina e na e asam uh -huh. um obi be ka say at what length e na say eh, closure no e kwa e be ma wa fe dey wa bo from crowd be ka say afe dey affect all crowd adwuma na ye ye ne bo ho a wo kwaji loan na wo dey bi akofa uh -huh. The essential loans for so edge bank for your music. The bear was me a china said, Nimana, my dear, me name the meet So, what Mr. Kwesi Abwa is saying is that as of July was the last time he was able to import some spare parts to his shop here at the Swami magazine. What he has presently locked up at the border is worth over 60,000 Ghana cities. And if this closure is prolonged, it will adversely affect his business. We have the Ashanti Regional Chairman of Guta here, Mr. Anthony Opon. Chairman, how adversely has this um, closure affected members of Guta? Oh, it's affecting a whole lot of people here, especially in Swan Magazine. Because most of them import things like this, the farm bed and other parts from Nigeria. And like my brother was telling you, a whooping lot of money is locked up at the border there. And the worst part of it, you see, they rented the car, trucks, that is carrying the goods here. How do you settle the matter with the, the car owner? The car has been there for a month, two months, three months now. Do you pay him every day? That's another issue. And the other thing is, those people importing perishable goods. As the goods is locked up there, it means they are losing it because the goods may arrive here expired and you can't sell it to the public. So the monies that have gone into it, they've gone, gone waste. So the government must do everything possible and ensure that very soon and very soon this, this issue is settled and the border is open. Um, uh, what has been your engagement, I mean Guta, your engagement with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other stakeholders in trying to get an amicable solution to this issue? Yeah, that's very unfortunate. For the three months the border is locked, the government did not come out with any form of statement concerning what is going on until we, Guta, approached the government. We issued a statement, and when we went to the Honorable Ayokubo, the foreign minister, until then that the government started to act and come out with some form of information. And luckily, we were uh, one of our executives who were part of the team that went to Nigeria. And what he's telling us is that the people is saying, the Nigerian authorities are saying that we, the, the Ghana government, should come down, come back, and then work out the modality for the open border to be open. We didn't close the border. The border was closed by the Nigerian authorities. So they have to look the better ways of opening the border or making sure the Ghanaian goods locked there are released to come here. So what should be the immediate step that you think Ghana and Nigeria should take so that at least the, the goods locked up at the border can come as other solutions are being sought after? Yeah, whilst they're sitting down working out the modalities that they are seeing, I suggest the authorities should send people there and make sure that at least that the protests lock up at the borders. Both sides of it should be made sure to allow to pass. 
so that later whatever modalities that they want to work out, they can come out. Of because you can't wait for those goods to be expired, and monies locked there, banks monies, loans that we've taken escalate before they release their goods. That will not going to help our businesses. It's going to cause a whole lot of mess as far as business is concerned. So you heard me speak with the Ashanti Regional Chairman of Guta, who is suggesting that until um, an applicable solution is found for the border to be open, at least the goods that have been logged at the both sides of the border should be allowed entry. Some scrutiny should be done so that they can come, so that they don't expire, especially the perishable goods like rice, milk, and others. Beatrice Fiogabra, TV3 News, Swami Magazine. And here in Accra, my name is Martin Estia Dudati. We'll take a quick breather. Ghana's Most Beautiful is on. Now, two previously evicted GMB contestants were on Sunday voted back into the competition. The two lucky returnees, the Ashanti regions, uh, Sewa and Ifia from the Ahafo region, arrived in the reality house to a warm reception. Sewa from the Ashanti region has been opening up uh, on what the second chance to battle for the crown means to her. The heat, I started feeling the heat when I got home, especially when I'm watching the TV and then I see this uh, theme song, the music video, when I see, yeah, so beautiful, and I see myself on the TV, <laughs> it feels some way, I'm like, wow, this is actually a reality. Do so you want the star performer from week one? The first week, yes. It was very exciting for you, I'm sure. <laughs> it was the same feeling for your fans. Yes. And the expectations were huge. Yes. Okay. This a poster girl, Sewa. <laughs> what went wrong? It was the public vote. Yeah, I was among the last three on the voting chat. Be great. I went out there and the, the messages I was receiving, it was just encouraging. At least I felt okay knowing I actually went home because of vote. Because people meet me and they're like, oh, Sewa, she was yeah, doing yeah. great. Oh, yeah, dear. But in the and all that. So I think that motive alone is, is a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing to go with. All right, so we want to also find out how it feels to be back in the reality house. Oh my goodness, this thing. <laughs> it's it's like, I never dreamt of it. Mm -hmm. I never dreamt of it. And then I'm here today. It's just like a miracle. It's just like a miracle. I never saw it coming, like my eviction. It's the same way my eviction happened. Right. I never saw it coming. And then my comeback to I never saw it coming. But it happened. All right. And the opportunity, what does this opportunity mean to you? This is another chance to compete for the crown and everything that it comes with. The car, the fame, bragging rights and everything. And this opportunity, what does it mean to you? This second opportunity means a lot to me, honestly. I'm in not to joke. I'm in to work hard, even more than what I did earlier. So they should watch out for me. They should just look out for the best. They should just look out for the best. And then I believe I can win the crown. Yes, I, I know I... I spent more weeks, I spent a couple of weeks home, but that doesn't guarantee that I cannot win. Yeah, okay. I've got some positive vibes, and I know with God it can work. We have three more weeks to go. I believe I can do my best. Yeah. I believe the other four weeks that I wasn't around can just bring me down. Yeah. She obviously is very excited to be back. Okay, so uh, it's on Sundays at 8 p.m. on TV3. Do make a date. However, the second contestant who's been voted, or a victim who's been voted back, will uh, be talking to us on News 360. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Martin Esiedidate. Do have a good afternoon, and as always, stay positive. Bye for now.